I have spent a lot of time this year working on various different ideas revolving around the topic of both generating and conserving energy. That included the construction of two small off-grid photovoltaic systems that I built from used uninterruptible power supplies. Also a solar bicycle trailer for charging e-bikes basically on the go, a small hydropower device, as well as a little bit of planning for a bigger hydro generator that will probably be built in 2023. In the last video, I also showed the repair of several German army generators. Off camera, a bunch of other things happened as well, like collecting firewood and rainwater and other things of that nature. One other project that I worked on, but that hasn't been shown yet on this channel, is the construction of a bigger, much more powerful off-grid system that will surpass the earlier photovoltaic systems shown in a few episodes throughout this year. That project involved working on different inverters, as well as on bigger gasoline-powered generators. What I actually wanted to have is a central battery storage and powerful inverter that could be powered by a photovoltaic system or a backup generator if necessary. This system will be upgraded even more in the future. I actually have way more solar panels and storage than I ever showed in the videos, but I think it won't make much sense to install them before springtime. Another huge step forward could be to actually build a combined heat and power system that would use wood gasification to heat the workshop and also generate electric energy via a generator. But that is just a future plan at this moment. At this point, I'm happy to announce that I have upgraded to a bigger battery, a much better inverter and generator, and I will show those in this video. Independent of that, I was also contacted by EcoFlow almost a year ago. Since I never did any kind of sponsorship or advertisements in my videos ever, I was reluctant and didn't know how to handle their offer. In fact, I get sponsorship requests every day, and after making over 200 videos on YouTube, I hadn't agreed to a single one of these offers. But a few weeks ago I realized that EcoFlow actually makes a portable version of what I've been working on here anyway. That's why after a lot of consideration I asked them if they would send me their biggest power station plus solar panels and also, last but not least, a dual fuel generator that can run on gasoline or propane. All those components can be operated as a comprehensive off-grid system. Since I'm unwilling to have any company use my YouTube channel as a free advertising platform, I also ask them for payment. I haven't built this channel for 9 years to do free advertising. But be that as it may, this video will be a combination of two things. I will show you how I worked on upgrading my workshop with a stationary do-it-yourself approach to an off-grid system, while at the same time reviewing and testing the portable EcoFlow devices. The centerpiece is the EcoFlow Delta Pro that contains an LFP battery with a storage capacity of around 3.6 kilowatt hours. And if everything goes as planned, the battery should be usable for a time span of 10 years. The Delta Pro also contains a powerful inverter here in Germany for 230 volts. In other countries it will come with a supply voltage and outlet type common in that country of course. It also has USB ports and a 12 volt DC outlet as well as various other connectors. They can be used to build a cluster of several units and among other things connect solar panels or the dual fuel generator. But we will have a closer look at those later in the video. For the remainder of this video, we will use the Delta Pro as a mobile power source for all the work we have to do anyway. And one advantage here really is the mobility. Having a unit like this in your car, for example, will allow you to operate rather heavy equipment on the go. In this video we won't really need that though. The power station will just sit on the bench being tested while we do what we always do here, work on a project. 
And as always, this video also contains found materials from the scrapyards or from the streets, as in the case of this board from a used kitchen sink. It's not exactly beautiful material, but it is pretty thick and that is what counts in the application that I have in mind here. You will see what I actually need it for in a few minutes. In that application, I need two rectangular pieces made from heavy wooden material of some sort and these used kitchen countertops that I found on the streets are just what I need. We will use the EcoFlow as a power source throughout the video and to give you a feeling of what one charge can actually do, we will start here at 100%. The Bosch circular saw cuts right through these countertops. Using the power station also gives me an opportunity to actually measure how much power my tools actually need. I've been using them for years but never really measured that. Under load the saw needs about 1000 watts and the power station seems to handle that without any problems. This curve here is actually left from the sink that was installed there. But in the new application we actually need something like that as well to accommodate a hose. So that is actually coming in handy. These wooden parts will return in a few minutes. All the while I have managed to cover everything in sawdust in here and I hate that. I normally don't do woodworking in here. Whenever I need to use a saw or sander on wood I go outside. But it's December and the weather is nasty. It often rains or snows and working outside only works now and then. As luck would have it, the weather was much better the next day, so I was able to work outside again. What we are going to do next is to build a battery holder from steel parts. These batteries are going to be the replacement for the much smaller batteries I had used for my off-grid solar setup I had shown in an earlier episode. One of the annoying things about these batteries is that they are really heavy. Once you have connected them together with wires, you can't move them individually without disconnecting the wires first. So it would be really nice to have a steel frame that holds these 10 batteries together before I will place them inside an enclosure. That frame will be built from steel angle pieces and they first need to be cut to length with an angle grinder. I need a lot of parts and therefore also needed to make a lot of cuts. After using the circular saw on the countertops and also testing the Delta Pro from the back of my car in the meantime, we started cutting steel at roughly 92% charge. After making all the cuts necessary to form these two rectangles, we are at 89%. Now I turned on the tick welder and started welding on battery power for the first time in my life. After connecting all the pieces to form those two rectangles and making sure the AGM batteries actually fit inside, I added four more angle pieces to create this block shaped form. I needed to do a lot of welding here and as always it all happened much quicker in the video than in reality. So after cutting the countertops and cutting and welding the steel frame we are at 71% charge. But what kind of enclosure will the batteries and the frame actually be installed in? Well, a while ago at one of the scrapyards I found this orange box here. This is a type of mobile breaker box used at construction sites. But it was already partially gutted and the box was overall in really bad shape. So I decided to reuse it for another purpose. All parts were removed, dents beaten out and the box was also cleaned. With all that done, the steel frame could be bolted to the bottom of that orange box and here is where the 10 AGM batteries will then be placed. Since we are going to connect it to an inverter with 120 volts DC input voltage, the 10 12 volt batteries will be connected in series. For that purpose, wires are bolted to the contacts of the batteries and heat shrink is used to insulate the battery contacts. With AGM batteries this size, a short circuit could have catastrophic consequences. Wires will burn and melt in no time and you could easily set the place on fire if you are not careful. After connecting and insulating the contacts of the lower row of batteries, a second row is installed on top. 
The hot air gun is once again powered by the Delta Pro power station. The inverter that I'm going to connect to this battery bank is this one here. It was made in 2012 by Berel in Germany, a company that has since been bought by another corporate entity. But as far as I know, they still make custom made inverters. Their designs all seem to have output stages with chunky toroidal transformers. This one was built for 120 volts DC input voltage and it is rated at around 5000 VA continuous output power. The only thing wrong with it is that its output voltage is somewhat too high and so far I have not been able to do any reverse engineering on it since the guys at Berel actually ground off the surfaces of the integrated circuits and semiconductors to hide what types they were using. So in order to step down the output voltage a little bit I also got my hands on this huge variac here. It is really dusty so I'm cleaning it off on the inside. Other than that it seems to be okay. Rated at 23 amps it's actually a good fit with the inverter. It should be able to handle 5000 VA as well. So let's turn on the inverter running on battery power for the first time and see if all of this works. and it seems to be doing just fine. The flickering comes from the 50 Hz AC by the way and the camera can't really handle that when the bulbs shine really bright. The bulbs are 20 75 watt bulbs so these should represent a nearly ideal resistive load of 1.5 kilowatts. Maybe we can do a little more testing in a few minutes. Meanwhile, the EcoFlow Delta Pro has been discharged to 66% capacity. That's actually not bad at all. I've been working here for two days and the battery has still two thirds of its capacity. EcoFlow also sent me this foldable 400 watt solar panel. It comes with a nice looking bag protecting the panel array and making it easier to store and carry around. Solar panels of various makes and power levels could be attached to this jack on the backside here. The same jack could also be used to charge the Delta Pro from a car's electric system. However, in Germany in December with a gray overcast sky, there is not much to be done with solar panels in general. So this is exactly when the smart generator comes into play. The generator that also has a built-in inverter and normal outlet can be used as a standalone device, but it also comes with a special cable that in conjunction with an adapter can be used to charge the Delta Pro's battery directly. I first let it run on gasoline as I start raking the lawn for the how many time this autumn slash winter. With a full tank of gasoline it could run for hours, but I didn't have a lot of gasoline here at the workshop left so it ran out after half an hour or so. So I connected a fresh cylinder of propane to this inlet on the side here and let the generator run on propane instead until the Delta Pro was fully charged again. So I think it goes without saying that it's pretty handy to have a portable system made up of a battery, solar panels and even a backup generator at your disposal. And that's of course why I had been working on a similar idea for a while. So I had bought this Bosch brand generator some months ago. It was built in 1986 and was formerly used by the German firefighters. It's powered by a Sachs ST280 two-stroke engine. To my knowledge, that is the biggest stationary motor that Sachs built back in the day. Just as a reminder, the small generators we saw in the last episode were Sachs ST50s 
and the somewhat bigger generator had a Zux ST100 with 100 cubic centimeters of displacement. In other words, this engine has almost three times that. The generator is rated at 5000 VA and it has 230 volt single phase and 380 volt three phase power outlets. Let's fire it up then. As you can see using heavy power tools isn't a problem as well. But its biggest drawbacks are also rather obvious. It is rather heavy and it is super loud. Just compare it to the smaller EcoFlow generator. Anyway, I wasn't willing to give it up just yet and I have been thinking back and forth how I can decrease the enormous noise emitted by this generator. So I figured it might be a good idea to build a little garage for the generator and I did it like that. Someone had put up an ad online saying that he was giving away these bricks for free. So I drove there with my trailer and hauled those bricks home and then I built this little garage here. That was back in the summer, that's why it's looking so nice outside. These are obviously paving stones, not meant to build walls from them. But hey, they were for free. And here is also where the wooden panels we made in the beginning come into play. I still need to install hinges and waterproof the doors, but I think it's quite obvious that it works in principle. So we have a self-made battery bank, a used inverter, solar panels and a heavy generator from 1986 versus the EcoFlow Delta Pro, foldable solar panels and smart generator. What are the pros and cons? Well, the German inverter and generator, for one, stood the test of time and they can deliver more output power. The generator also has three-phase power. On the other hand though, the inverter alone weighs more than the entire power station, including inverter, charger and batteries, etc, etc. The self-made battery storage is easily accessible and can be repaired or upgraded, but the old-fashioned AGM batteries also have major drawbacks compared to the LFP batteries of the Delta Pro. At 18 amp hours, the AGM battery bank has a nominal capacity of roughly 2 kilowatt hours, which is a little less than half the Delta Pros, but only about half of that is really usable if you don't want to damage the AGM batteries. So I think that the DIY battery bank, despite its huge size and weight, has only one quarter the capacity and it remains to be seen for how many charge and discharge cycles it can actually be used. The Delta Pro's batteries have much bigger capacity and they may well prove to be much more long-lived. Now, you know me and I'm certainly an old-fashioned type of guy who prefers rugged, less complex technology. But I still have to admit that for a portable, modular system, the EcoFlow power station, especially in conjunction with the generator, is a pretty powerful tool. And I also like that these devices have so many different built-in connectors with various output voltages and charging options from various sources like the power grid, car batteries, solar panels and a generator. So in case you are interested in their products, I have put a link under the video. What about my own system though? Well, as I work on it, it will certainly improve and expand as well. I'm sure there will be maintenance work to be done on the generator. I will want to know more about the inner workings of the inverter. And I will also have to come up with a charging solution for the battery bank. So you can rest assured that you will see and hear more about the system in the future. And as always, I hope that you liked this video. And if you want to see more about this off-grid project, then please give the video a like. If you want to help the channel more actively, please consider making a donation via PayPal, links down in the video description, or become a supporter on Patreon under patreon.com slash tpai. See you soon.